I didn't think that this movie would break me at all, but like my jaw was on the floor for a solid five minutes. That's insane. Wh why? I'm just messing with you. I wrote those lines specifically for this intro, but the sentiment does stand. This movie gets weird, especially towards the end. Howdy. You're watching Home Alone 12. I'm Kevin McAllister 4.0, and this time, I don't even wait for people to break into my house. <laughs> I torture them in the streets. This video idea actually dates back like pretty far. I had this uh, conversation with a viewer, Zachariah, if you're still here. I don't know, that's pretty sick. We talked about two things, a show that we eventually landed on being adventures from the Book of Virtues, and a movie that we didn't quite end up finding. It was a movie where a boy in a library gets transported into the world of Arthurian legend uh, and fights a dragon. The closest thing I could find to that was the movie we're talking about today. The Page Master. Uh, if that concept does sound like a movie you know, uh, leave it in the comments so I can solve this year old mystery. That's not what today is about though. It's about Macaulay Culkin being a little fucking nerd. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This movie was released in 1994 to a very underwhelming audience, only raking in about half its budget in the box office. So, um... You could probably assume that wasn't a Page Master too. <laughs> It was a live-action animated movie that combined these two types of film into this one blend of harmonious cinema. Except for the fact that the styles, like, only mesh together once in the entire movie. But that's okay, it was 1994. I mean, Who Framed Roger Rabbit only came out, like, six years before this one did. Okay, maybe not. Sorry, before we get to that point in the movie, we have to learn the sacred lore that led up to it. This movie starts out with a small animated segment showing off what's about to happen in the film. Hey, that's kind of how I started out this video. Um, except for the fact that I lied. Please don't be mad at me for that. Suddenly, Macaulay Culkin wakes up and we immediately get to see what his character is really like. He's a fucking nerd. Oh, that's right. Richie Rich? More like little bitch. Because he was also in that movie. Yeah! Okay, but for real, he's got a no smoking sign hung up right above his bed. Like, dude, it's your room. What, are you scared your parents are gonna come in like 12 times a day and start fucking lighting them up? <laughs> and even if they did, what are they gonna do? Stop because there's a sign? Also, I made a Richie Rich joke, but like, this character's name is Richard in this movie. Um, and I just thought that was a cute little parallel. His dad is always disappointed in him because he's careful too careful. He uses statistics and logic to make him as safe as he can in any given moment because of how afraid he is of everything. Afraid of storms, afraid of ladders, afraid of baseball, afraid of tuna fish sandwiches. Tuna fish sandwiches. Nah, you know, I don't like tuna either, Rich. He kind of, you kind of got a point there. Tuna fish sandwiches. He almost kills his dad while he's building him a treehouse he'd never go in because ladder. So his dad tasks him with going to the store to pick up more nails for the treehouse he'd never go in because ladder. No, real financially smart dad, spend more money on this thing your child will never ever go in. Rich gears up and heads out on a bike and in an outfit that I won't make fun of. These kids do it for me. Where'd he go in the mood? <laughs> a storm blows in and he makes a wrong turn at some point, leading him to a library he decides to stay in to wait out the rain. In the library, he meets none other than Christopher Lloyd, who's giving his Christopher Lloyd all. He gives him a library card and tells him that if he gets lost, he simply needs to follow the exit sign. Knowing how this movie plays out, it, it almost reminds me of like Dante's Inferno or like Hades a little bit, and, and you'll kind of see why going forward. He wakes up on the floor and is met with this incredible looking gooey paint dragon wave thingy that turns him into an animated form of himself. This is where we meet the Page Master. Uh, who, despite being the titular character of the film, is only in it for all of like five minutes. He sends Richie flying into a corner of the library where we meet our first sidekick, Adventure. He's a pirate and he's voiced by Professor X himself, Patrick Stewart. Oh yeah, I, uh, I completely forgot to mention that this movie is completely star-studded and that's probably where most of the budget went if I'm being honest. Adventure is a pirate who encapsulates the very idea of adventure. He gets Richard going and tries to get him to take risks as he leads him to the exit. We'll meet a couple more of these books as we move further into the film, but something to know about them is that they all want to be checked out by humans. Hence why Richard's new library card is so important. 
I wonder if there's some reason for that, you know? Like, are they gonna die if people don't take them out of the library? Damn. Maybe I should go to the library more. You know what they say, save a book. Write a cowboy. No, fucking Jesus. Their first means of business is to get the high ground to scope out the exit, but Rich doesn't do ladders. So to scare some courage into him, Adventure releases the Kraken from a book and that actually works pretty well. As he leaps from the shelves to what would be his death, he grabs onto another sentient book, Fantasy, and she's voiced by Whoopi Goldberg. Obviously, she's based on like the fairy godmother archetype found in fairy tales, most notably Cinderella, but she doesn't really look like the one from the Disney movie. She looks like the one from Shrek 2. Or I, I guess I should say that the Shrek 2 one looks most like her because this movie came out before. Sorry. Anyway, the three make their way to the horror section and find our third book character, Horror, voiced by Frank Welker who I think is based on Igor. They make their way to Dr. Jekyll's manor in search of the exit and meet the man himself. Surely nothing will happen to him to make him turn into an evil alter ego. Surely not. Yeah, he goes all green mode and he's genuinely kinda creepy. Man, this new Grinch sure is pissed. Eventually they make their way out and fall into a new land, the land of adventure. A new ring of hell. They see Captain Ahab and Moby Dick for about two seconds before we get all Treasure Island up in this bitch. Rich gets kidnapped by Long John Silver, everyone's least favorite fast food joint. Fucking gross. Ooh. He's saved by fantasy and horror who cause a big chaotic fight. That's where Richard picks up a sword, uh, but he doesn't use it. Yet. I'm just thinking about how different of a tone this movie would take if Richard just picked up the sword and like no hesitation just stabbed him. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, dude. What the hell? What? I took initiative and I'm getting over my fears. I'm solving my problems. No, you can't just stab all your problems away. No, I think it works just fine. And I think I just found my next problem to solve. Now, where's that tuna? Tuna fish sandwiches. Oh boy, a random inspirational music number to introduce the fantasy section. Awesome. Whatever you imagine. Finally, now's the moment you've all been waiting for. Probably. It, it's the title of the video. Side note really quick, in this part, Fantasy has horror rip a page out of her to bring the flying carpet from Arabian Nights to life. And it threw me off guard because it was one of the most creative parts of the film. And they like, never do this? Ever? Dude, this movie would have been so much cooler if Richard was like this, this spellcaster slinging references to stories out of these books to like further his quest. Anyway, Rich makes it to the exit, but he realizes he left his book friends behind. So, in order to save them from the dragon, he suits up and takes him on head to head. Get him! Get him! Get him! Oh. Huh. Ew. Hey, this is getting kind of gross. Let's go see what the books are up to. Hey, let's not. Richard unleashes a beanstalk up out of the dragon, which uh, makes me really uncomfortable. Just thinking of a plant like going all the way at... <laughs> Bl no, I need, I'm gonna make myself sick. I'm just gonna get back to the movie and... Uh, stop with the kissing. They meet up with a page master and he realizes how much he's changed over this journey. Through hell. He wakes up in the real world to find himself surrounded by the three books he met in the book world. Unfortunately, Christopher Lloyd Librarian tells him he can only check out two, and then immediately tells him that he'll make an exception. But only if he gets to make this absolute insane face as he leaves. Holy shit, I cannot get over how this shot looks, you know? He's at such like a weird angle, and his, he's got a specific smirk going on, only triggering certain muscles in his face. I, I did. No, Richie hits the sick bike jump on his way home, falls asleep in his treehouse, and his sentient books prove that magic is real. And that was the page master. I watched through this movie twice, you know, as I normally do with these movie videos. 
Um, and yeah, I just, both times, I couldn't really get into it that much. It's fine. There was some stuff that was fun, there was some stuff that was weird, uh, and there was too much stuff that was just kind of boring. Despite being a hybrid style film based on the entirety of literature, so many aspects really felt generic. The biggest thing I noticed was actually from Macaulay. I think they casted him for his screen because, oh my god, they use it so often in this film. I'm just gonna play you a quick compilation of every single time he screams because, oh my god. Anyway, I think I'm gonna leave this one here. Um, I guess I'm off to go find a tuna fish sandwich to kill. Peace. Tuna fish sandwiches.